pipe system beneath the psych ward is... Well, it's complex. It'd be real easy to get lost. How complex can it be? Very. When they built this place in 1858, the pipes were lead. A century later, they discovered lead was a health risk, so they went to copper. They never removed the lead pipes. It cost too much. There's thousands of yards of the stuff still down there. And then a few years ago, they switched to industrial plastic. Again, it was cheaper just to lay it over the old stuff. If I make a wrong turn down there tonight, I won't make it back by count. But you won't make the wrong turn, right? In April of 2006, the National Science and Technology Council published its Federal Plan for Cybersecurity and Information Assurance Research and Development. Although it failed to find any evidence, the plan highlighted the likeliness of terrorist groups using steganographic techniques to exchange information. There are hundreds of different software tools that would be readily available to these groups and, as a result of this threat, the practice of the counter-science, steganalysis, detecting hidden correspondence using steganography, has increased dramatically since 2001. This is just the most recent adaptation and application of a science historically only limited by the imagination and ingenuity of the individual or group trying to communicate in secret. The ancient Greek historian Herodotus is responsible for the first recorded instance of steganography with his tale of Histias, a Greek tyrant who was said to have shaved the head of his most trusted slave in order to tattoo a secret message onto his scalp. Eventually, the slave's hair grew back and he was able to travel to meet Histias's contact undaunted, where his head was again shaved to reveal a message warning of a Persian invasion. Another early recording reported wax tablets being used to hide secret correspondence. The tablets were favored during the time because of the reusability of the wax as a writing surface. However, hidden messages would be written on the wood underneath the layer of wax and could be easily accessed by those who knew where to look. Other examples include the famous Trojan horse of Greek mythology, where the Greek soldiers concealed themselves in the body of a giant wooden horse. The statue was brought into the Spartan encampment under the guise of a gift, but the soldiers snuck out of the statue at night and killed the soldiers of Sparta while they slept. Skitales were a popular way for concealing messages on strips of leather. When laid out, the strip would appear to be a random group of letters, but when wrapped carefully around a staff of a specific width, the letters would spell out the intended message. Early Christians adopted the symbol of ichthus, commonly referred to today as a Jesus fish. Since walking sticks were common during these times, if a Christian was talking to an unfamiliar individual, they might casually draw one half of ichthus in the dirt. If the stranger was also a Christian, they would finish the drawing, signaling friendly intent. The term steganography dates back to a three-volume work by the German scholar Johannes Trimetheus, titled Steganographia. While the first two books in the series focused mainly on the art of cryptography and concealing hidden messages, the work as a whole was blacklisted by the Catholic Church soon after it was published due to a large amount of occult-related material in the third volume. It was not until the late 19th century that modern scholars realized that the third book, littered with number charts and dates seemingly related to the practice of black magic, actually concealed a cryptographic continuation of the previous volumes within the book's contents. The number charts and subject matter served as a disguise, demonstrating the power of not only cryptography, but also steganography. The future of steganography would follow. Invisible ink was made popular during the 18th century, specifically during the American Revolution. Hidden messages were revealed by reading between the lines, where a writer could use lemon juice, milk, or chemical agents to hide virtually undetectable correspondence. Cardan grayets were also popular during the Revolution. A piece of parchment with specifically patterned cutouts was laid over a seemingly innocent letter to reveal its true message. This would later evolve into hourglass masks. Many historians of the American Civil War era agree that friendly homesteads of the Underground Railroad would commonly hang their quilts outside in a specific pattern that signaled they were a safe house.
It is important to note the difference between cryptography and steganography. The former focuses on encoding messages to be indecipherable to anyone without the proper technology, and the latter relies on being hidden in plain sight so as not to even begin to arouse the suspicions of a third party. To illustrate the difference, we could look at the story of a British POW during World War II. Major Alexis Kazdagli passed his time in a German POW camp by cross-stitching decorative canvases. If one familiar with Morse code were to look closely at the borders of one of his artistic endeavors, they might be able to read an interesting message written in the pattern, including the phrase "God save the king." In this case, the steganographic aspect is the coding concealed in the bordering, and the cryptographic element is the coding itself. A few more examples of turn-of-the-century steganography. A letter was found recently detailing a suspect's non-involvement with a socialist plot of 1910, dubbed the High Treason Incident. The letter looked blank, but holding it up to the light revealed tiny pinholes that were inscribed to create a written message hidden to avoid censorship. Microdot technology was used for steganographic purposes in Germany during World War One and World War Two, and could still be used today. The process involves shrinking an image or message down to the size of a period and putting it into another message or picture, which could be read or viewed by the intended recipient using a microscope. Backmasking is a recording technique in which a sound or message is recorded backward onto a track that is meant to be played forward. Backmasked words sound like unintelligible noise when played forward, but when played backward, are clear speech.